I can break the video up in clips. I don't know how I'm going to do this because there's so much to talk about, like I said. But nevertheless, right, that was that when it comes to black economics. But fast forward back to the 1960s and 1970s. Drugs were pushed into the black community. Drugs were imported and pushed into the black community from the United States government. Drugs, crack, cocaine, heroin, whatever, whatever was pushed into the black community for the purpose of the government. Remember, remember people that I'm saying that none of these policies were created for black people to get ahead, to succeed. None of them are created in our favor, not even college. We can talk about that. That's another, that's another topic, but nevertheless. So drugs were imported and pushed into the black, specifically the black communities because all of the redlining that was going on, it's just so much to unravel when it comes to the brokenness of the black family. And it's not just welfare being the main thing. Welfare ain't even nowhere near the main thing. It's not it. Oh my goodness. So now we have these black people in these communities that are looking for ways to survive, to support their families, to support their children. So now we're pushing in the communities for these people to sell these drugs to their community. And they're selling them to the community. And now we have a bunch of black people and low and minority people who are utilizing drugs. Now we can push through the media how they still ain't shit. They still, we gave them opportunities and this is what they did with it. So we can push that through the media. But the drugs got into the communities through the government. So when you talk about the dismantling, the dysfunction and the brokenness of the black family, when you talk about the single home, you got to talk about how our men were targeted, how they were targeted from day one when they were building for the black family. Every single time that black men come together, black men show power, black men show organization, they are targeted. And they are destroyed. And it is intentionally set out to make sure that there is no success in their homes. So that with these drugs being pushed into the communities, now they're being arrested. Now they're criminal, criminalizing our black men. Now they're saying that they're violent and they're murdering each other, but they put these things into the neighborhood. So now the black woman has to survive on her own. So now this is where the opportunity to have welfare in your home comes in. But you can't have a black man in your home if you are on the welfare program. Why? Because that does nothing but, again, like you said, keep the black man out the home. That's the whole sense of keeping the black man out the home is, like you said, like I said, she be having some points. I don't know if I said that in this video, but I said she be having some points sometimes, right? So a man does structure a home. A two-parent home statistically does show that children are more functional, successful, and things like that. Not to say that people in um, one-parent homes are not, because that's not the, the topic of conversation right now. I know that people can sometimes take that and run with it. But nevertheless, more so targeting black men or creating policies and law around the destruction of black men is what tore the black family apart. That is what created single motherhood in the black community, okay? Those are the things. And then when you speak on our women and what we do, again, this is all a structural system. This is all the media who is controlled by the white man, who is controlled by everything, pushing this into the communities, pushing this through the media, um, taking some of the black women who have experienced these experiences that they created for us to experience. You see what I'm saying? Because it gets deeper. We put us in these communities and that was all a trap because you never gave us the resources. You never gave us the income. You never gave us the opportunities. You never even gave us the bus routes to get to where we need to get to, to be educated on what we need to be educated on, to be surrounded by people who might be able to teach us something different. We had to really step out and go learn it for ourselves. Right, mama? We had to step out and go learn that for ourselves and everybody still ain't able to do that. 
there's still black mothers or single motherhood. The percentage rate had rose in what we said the 1970s to about 70 something percent, and it's still high as hell in the black community because the destruction, the dismantling, and the dysfunction, the foundation of the destruction of the black community, meaning what was put into place to destroy the black community was working. Okay? And so this was continuously removing the black man out of the home. So single motherhood did rise. And when you are in survival mode and you got to take care of your kids, you got to take care of your home, you're working most of your time, you're working most of your days, you don't have time to stop and think about those resources that may be out there, those people that you may be able to connect with. You don't have the time to do that because you're in 24-hour survival mode. Again, which was the system created to break the home and to break the black family. So when I was speaking earlier in the previous video on acknowledging privilege, the most privilege in the United States is the white man. So we have to make sure that we are acknowledging privilege when we speak. So when you speak, you're speaking on the black family, you're speaking on the black household, but you married a white man. And it just doesn't look the same. It don't look the same. It don't look the same, one, because you have the privilege of white supremacy in your household, in your love life. You're always going to have that mindset. You're always going to have that, that structure. You, your white conservative husband, you know, don't come from a black home and didn't have black experiences. Don't know what it feel like to have a black man removed from your family, even if he was the drug dealer of the family. Don't know what it feel like because that was the one that was provided for the family, for the home. They don't know what those experiences feel like for him to drive and to be pulled over and to be harassed and possibly murdered because of the color of his skin. And then that's another thing. She speaks on a lot. She speaks on the things that happen when it comes to the Black Lives Matter movement all due to the police brutality and the murders that was going on. Mind you, when you in the police academy, this is a foundation structured again by white people. The policies, the laws, the regulations, how they move, how they act, how they think, everything is construct constructed by white people. Think about where the police force started and where it comes from. Again, the Black Panther Party, how they went 